The British people have voted to leave the European Union and their will must be respected. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at times when British Prime Ministers or other senior politicians were forced out of office. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Tonight, the key to 10 Downing Street lies in the hands of her party. She led them to victory three times, then they turned on her. Tony Blair. Prime Minister, there's been a great deal of speculation about your future. Are you ready to put that speculation to rest now? Admittedly, Blair's ousting wasn't quite as public or dramatic as some of the others, but an array of secret deals in the Labour cabinet led to Blair agreeing that eventually he'd step down and let Gordon Brown take the reins. The first thing I'd like to do is... Uh is to apologise, actually, on behalf of the Labour Party for the last week. This came after a turbulent decade in power, with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan still ongoing, and the Eccleston affair coming to light. His resignation speech showed he had clear regrets about his tenure, though, and betrayed that he wasn't ready to leave office yet. As for my um, uh, timing and date of departure, I would have preferred to do this in my own way. And maybe he shouldn't have, considering Brown wasn't really able to fix any of the issues plaguing Labour at the time, and they promptly lost the 2010 election. The next party conference in a couple of weeks will be my last party conference as party leader. Stanley Baldwin and Ramsay MacDonald. 1924 saw a double whammy of high-level political resignations, so we're including both Baldwin and MacDonald as one entry. A vote of no confidence was brought against Baldwin following a hung parliament, which led to his subsequent resignation. MacDonald then became the country's first ever Labour PM, but not for long. Barely 11 months later, and another vote of no confidence was brought, this time against MacDonald. As the party still didn't have a majority government, just like the Tories before them, they lost too. But then the subsequent snap election put Baldwin back in power anyway. Was the whole fiasco for nothing? Theresa May. She was always unpopular with the British public, although in hindsight she's definitely not the worst Prime Minister of the last decade. Against all predictions, the British people voted to leave the European Union. After clinching victory in the 2016 Tory leadership election, in which the other candidates all dropped out, so then she ran unopposed, May's tenure went from bad to worse. Blunders from her time as Home Secretary reappeared, like the infamous Go Home vans, while she also made a few new gaffes. Fields of wheat. Anyone? I have done everything I can to convince MPs to back that deal. Sadly, I have not been able to do so. Numerous votes of no confidence were brought against her, but following myriad failures in delivering Brexit and a hung parliament in the 2017 election against Jeremy Corbyn, May was forced to step down in 2019. But it is now clear to me that it is in the best interests of the country for a new Prime Minister to lead that effort. James Callaghan. Another politician who catastrophically lost a vote of no confidence, James Callaghan's tenure as Prime Minister came to an end in 1979. With respect, I think that's partly the media's responsibility. It's you not see, me when... that's on strike, sir. Despite a long and prestigious political career, Margaret Thatcher tabled the vote in 79 that ended in Callaghan's defeat, triggering an unavoidable general election. This was largely a result of the winter of discontent, a year marked by severe weather and massive strikes, a crisis that Callaghan wasn't able to get a handle on. I don't say keep it up as long as you like. What I say to um, all the new P members is go back to work. What followed was a historic majority for Thatcher, who went on to heavily legislate against strikes and the end of Callaghan's career in top-level politics, though, like many former premiers, he eventually settled in the House of Lords. We're not doing this for the fun of it. And we're doing it because this is the amount of resources that we have got available. Liz Truss. Miraculously, Truss won the first Tory leadership elections in 2022, getting the support of the membership, but crucially, not her fellow MPs. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. The result was the shortest tenure of a Prime Minister in the country's history, as Truss was plagued with problems. First was the death of the Queen, which meant the government had to shut down for the mourning period, and then there was the disastrous mini-budget that plunged the country into economic turmoil. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. The Daily Star began live-streaming a lettuce to see if Truss would last longer than its shelf life, which, as we all know, she didn't. 
After fewer than 50 days, the era of trust was over. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. William Gladstone. Though this was the 19th century, Gladstone achieved the remarkable feat of losing three separate votes of no confidence, though before the 20th century, it was nowhere near as uncommon for governments to be ousted like this. Gladstone first lost the vote in 1873, and then again 12 years later in 1885, and a third time in 1886. While one of those times was because of his budget, the votes twice came down to Irish politics and bills about Irish home rule. Ireland wouldn't get home rule at all until 1914 decades after Gladstone had first tried to bring it about, though the Irish Civil War would begin just eight years later. David Cameron Perhaps it's more fair to say that David Cameron ousted himself, since he did dig his own grave by promising a referendum on EU membership. The will of the British people is an instruction that must be delivered. It was not a decision that was taken lightly. This promise led him to a clear victory in the 2015 election, ending the coalition government with the Lib Dems. But when the ballots came back in favour of Brexit, chaos broke out. Cameron was so embarrassed by losing his own referendum that he stepped down with immediate effect, leaving Theresa May to take over the Tory leadership. But I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. Despite facing many scandals, including Piggate and then the Greensill scandal in 2020, he then returned to the Tory cabinet in 2023 as Rishi Sunak's new foreign secretary. A negotiation with the European Union will need to begin under a new prime minister. Jeremy Corbyn. I want to also make it clear that I will not lead the party in any future general election campaign. Though he never became Prime Minister, Jeremy Corbyn helmed the Labour Party for five years after succeeding Ed Miliband. But his time as leader of the opposition was marred with controversy, and Labour lost two general elections under him. This is obviously a very disappointing night for the Labour Party with the result that we've got. Corbyn ultimately caved to the pressure and stepped down as leader, paving the way for Sir Keir Starmer. But things only got messier from there. In the election campaign, we put forward a manifesto of hope. The ongoing row about anti-Semitism in the party continued even without him, and he was eventually suspended from the party and then banned from standing as a Labour candidate in another election. Maybe that's not the best way to treat somebody who was democratically elected by the members to lead the party. Margaret Thatcher, victim of the notorious backbench departure speech. When Geoffrey Howe denounced Thatcher from the benches while resigning as Home Secretary, things were over for Maggie. Having watched Mrs Thatcher's performance in the House of Commons this afternoon, many Tory MPs are wondering what on earth they've done in getting rid of her. Her former Defence Secretary, Michael Heseltine, led the rebellion and put himself forward as a leadership candidate. Thatcher ultimately left government in 1990, quitting the leadership elections so that the front runners were Heseltine and John Major. The new world into which the Tory party is now entering with three candidates for leader. The photo of Thatcher leaving Downing Street with tears in her eyes remains well known. Major was the eventual winner, lasting as Prime Minister until being defeated by Blair. But Heseltine served as the deputy for his part in the final ousting of Britain's most controversial PM. According to Newsnight sources, a massive majority, including some of her staunchest supporters, advised her she should quit. Boris Johnson. In one of the most dramatic moments in recent British politics, Boris Johnson was spectacularly kicked out of number 10 back in 2022. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. He managed to resign on the 7th of July without using the word resign once in his speech and then became an interim PM while the disastrous leadership election got underway. And in the last few days I've tried to persuade my colleagues that it would be eccentric to change governments when we're delivering so much. It was a slew of scandals that caused his eventual downfall, the mishandling of the pandemic, the costly renovations of Number 10, and the Chris Pincher scandal that, it now seems, Johnson knew all about. In those arguments, and of course it's painful not to be able to see through so many ideas and, and projects myself. Almost 60 resignations of government figures meant that Johnson had well and truly lost control of the Conservative Party and there was no way to carry on. Let us know in the comments which of these politicians you think overstayed their welcome. But as we've seen uh, at Westminster, uh, the herd instinct is powerful when the herd moves.
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.